This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on the date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone telephone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Samir Kuthari, Managing Director, Hindustan Foods Limited, for his opening remarks. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Cathy. Good afternoon and welcome everyone for our quarter one FY23 earnings conference call. Thank you for taking the time to attend this, especially after a holiday yesterday. I'm joined on the call by Ganesh Argekar, who is the Executive Director, Mayank Samdani, the Group CFO, Vimal Solanki, the Head, Emerging Businesses and Corporate Communications, and SGA, our Investor Relations Advisor. I hope everyone has had a chance to go through our updated investor presentation, which was uploaded on the Stock Exchange and our company website. Overall, I am pleased with the performance of the company in the last quarter. We have achieved our highest ever turnover and profitability numbers on a consolidated basis. And given that the ice cream facility and the RV shawl facility that we've talked about before will start contributing significantly to these numbers in the coming quarters, we are confident of meeting our guidance both in terms of revenues and profitability. This quarter, the team that has commercialized our ice cream facility deserves a special mention. While in terms of the turnover, it didn't contribute much in this quarter, uh, it was a tough and a successful uh, startup, right from managing the complex procurement to manufacturing and commercializing all the formats of ice cream, uh, sticks, cones, cups, and party packs. I think this facility and the team is a testament to our ability to service our customers' requirements in new geographies and in new product categories. The highlight of the coming quarter, which is Q2, will be the integration of the RB shawl facility, uh, which we finally signed the agreement on 1st of July. Given its EOU status and the compliance requirements of pharmaceutical products, uh, this integration is probably going to be quite challenging for us as a team. However, we are very excited to see what we can do in this field and are also aggressively looking at more opportunities in this sector. As far as the medium term is concerned, while the slowdown of FMCG demand and the inflationary pressures have definitely affected our customers, it has also led them to rethink about their manufacturing strategies and explore ways of becoming more nimble and lean. One way, of course, is to outsource more. And in that regard, I'm confident that given our track record, we will continue to be the chosen manufacturing partner for the FMCG companies. I will now hand over the call to Ganesh Agekar, our Executive Director, to brief you on the operational highlights. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to highlight the operational performance of uh, Q1 uh, FY23. All the existing units of the company were stable and performed as per expectations. The new color cosmetic exhibition was completely integrated and the factory achieved its highest ever turnover in this quarter. We have started manufacturing a host of new products at the facility and we are confident that this unit will be able to service the growing requirement of the customer. The wholly owned subsidy HFL consumer product has successfully commercialized the ice cream uh, plant in Uttar Pradesh. Over the monsoon uh, winter bean season, the, the plant is forced to deliver 15,000 litons per, per annum of ice cream going into the peak season at the end of FY23. This includes the expansion project at the site which should be online by Q4 FY23. Record Bank is a short India limited exhibition has been successfully completed. The company is working on the integration plan of the same. The recently merged beverages plant in Mysore did record turnover in this quarter. The beverages plant unit has an order book higher than its capacity and we are working on expanding the capacity. Based on the current plans, we expect the unit to be profitable in this financial year after two years of painful uh, pandemic. The merger of the March beverages plant at Coimbatore has also been completed and the board has sanctioned an additional investment of 10 crores at the Coimbatore site. 
the work on this project has started and we expect to complete this by September. The project work at, at the Hyderabad Bar and Soap project that we have been talking about for the last few quarters, uh, well, I am relieved to say that it has finally started and, and is expected to be completed by Q4 FY23. Despite the vagaries of commodity inflation and integration of new factories, and new product categories, the, the company has managed to service the customer demand and achieve nearly 600 crores of turnover. I would now like to hand over the call to Mayank Samdani, our good CFO, to take you to the financial results of the quarter ended 30th June 2022. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. We have commenced the quarter on a good note, and we are on track to meet our annual estimates. As the newly acquired companies and the new factories start ramping up, the action has started shifting to the consolidated numbers of the company instead of, instead of the standalone numbers. We have hit the highest ever turnover and the profitability figures on the consolidated basis in this quarter. In the next couple of quarters, as these companies and projects start ramping up, we expect the consolidated figures to converge with the standalone figures. Our total revenue for the quarter increased by 30% on a year to year basis to Rs. 598 crores. In Q1 FY23, as compared to 461 crores in Q1 FY22. EBITDA for the quarter has seen a growth of 43% year on year and stood at 38.6 crores as against 27 crores in Q1 FY22. Profits of the tax grew by 48% year on year to Rs. 9 crores, which is the highest ever reported by the company. In this regard, I have to mention that we believe that the company will be able to reduce its tax bill from next year as compared to the 35% tax bracket that we are currently in. EPS numbers have been recasted after the split and our EPS for the quarter was, was rupees 1.32 versus 0.89 last year, a growth of nearly 50%. As on June 30, 22 and 22, our net worth stand at 319 crores, raw block an increase from 550 to 649 crores on account of commercialization of the new factories and lines, though they are yet to contribute fully to the revenue and profitability figures as they are yet to ramp up to their fully. Despite that, our debt-to-equity ratio remains steady at a comfortable position of 1.16 on the consolidated basis and our interest coverage ratio remains at a strong 5.38 times. We reintegrate our near-term and long-term targets for revenue and profitability as to focus on accelerating growth through exploring organic and inorganic opportunity. With this, we have remained focused on strengthening our balance sheet and cash flow through effective capital management, which would facilitate us for the first With this, I would like to open the floor for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. You may please press star and one to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Faisal Abba from AG Hawaiian Company. Please go ahead. Yeah. So, Sami, there is a uh, enabling resolution that we, we have uh, asked for for 300 crores uh, more equity raising. So, is it just an enabling res uh, resolution, or we may even raise equity in the next two or three years? So, uh, hi, Faisal. Good afternoon. Uh, it is an enabling resolution, but the, the very definition of enabling means that at some point of time we might raise it. But for the time being, we have uh, no definitive plans. Uh, the enabling resolution is for us, uh, as you are aware, and, and we'll have to take it up in the AGM. Uh, since uh, just in terms of the timelines uh, and the legal processes, uh, we've been advised that it's always better to keep an enabling resolution so that it gives us flexibility at any point of time to be able to uh, look at raising funds, etc. So nothing on the anvil as such or nothing which is which will be done uh, in the next... But, uh, it all depends on the opportunities that come up. Absolutely, Faisal. I mean, uh, I think you, you, you've answered the question. Uh, depending on, on how uh, the opportunities shape up, uh, we'll probably uh, be able to give some definitive answers on this. 
and can you give uh, some idea on how the you know this uh, beauty and wellness and you know the whole pharma contracting business is shaping up for us and uh, whether the development uh, in charge has been able to make some good inroads for further business so the beauty segment and the health and wellness segment are two different ones the beauty one is the aero care acquisition uh, which is the color cosmetics one uh, that has actually uh, integrated very well uh, we hit our highest uh, turnover uh, last quarter as far as that company is concerned uh, and we expect that that will continue going ahead as well uh, we mentioned that we should be able to do around 100 crores of turnover out of that facility uh, and i think we are well on track to do that as far as the health and wellness is concerned uh, that's uh, the rb shawl facility uh, we are getting some very good feedback from our customers uh, sanjay who is heading that business recently visited london uh, and met the customers there as well uh, and uh, i can i can just say that right now i think we are very cautiously optimistic uh, that we should be able to integrate that facility well into our system and also look at any other opportunities that can come our way in that uh, sector okay thank you very much thank you sir thank you reminder to all the participants to ask a question you may please press star and one the next question is from the line of ajay thakur from anand rathi please go ahead i think my question i have two questions first one was on the margin uh, so if we were to look at the margin for the quarter it was More like six point four percent versus uh, you know more like five point nine percent in the base quarter. Even on sequential basis, we have seen a bit of improvement on the margin front. So, can you just elaborate on what has been driving this margin improvement? Uh, is there seasonal seasonality factor, or uh, what is the reason behind this improvement? Ajay, I'm going to ask Mayank to answer this question, and then I'll uh, uh, give some operational details once Mayank has given you the financial details. So sure. there are two things uh, uh, here, uh, Ajay. One is that you have correctly said that these are the the product mix has also changed uh, in this quarter. Ice cream has uh, we have started producing ice cream with a with a better margin uh, as regards uh, other products. And secondly, some of our uh, some of our uh, uh, some of our Products is on the uh, conversion cost model also, which is nearly done. Just like in ATC, we are doing Tata on the conversion cost basis, where there, there is no uh, RMPM cost, only conversion billing is there. So you will see the margin betterment in there also. Okay. And as I said, from an operational perspective, yes, there will be some amount of seasonality coming in. Now that Mysuru facility has finally, uh, we have an order book. Uh, which is uh, hopefully making the facility profitable. Uh, this quarter was the uh, the highest turnover for Mysore facility. That uh, ended up uh, reducing our burn rate in Mysore uh, quite a bit. Uh, the next couple of uh, next at least four or five months uh, will be lean quarters as far as beverage season is concerned, as well as ice cream is concerned, uh, and then again it will it will ramp up. so you will see uh, going ahead some amount of margin variability uh, from quarter to quarter as far as our uh, numbers is concerned okay uh, the second question was you know the ice cream unit uh, so you have indicated that you know there would be approximately a 200 cr kind of investment into the unit and if i were to look at the, the asset terms uh, and you know assuming that there could be around 2 to 3 times asset terms so we would be making more like you know 400 to 600 cr kind of a turnover but just trying to understand if uh, we were to do you know manufacturing for one of the large kind of a company or uh, so 600 or or maybe even 500 to 600 cr kind of a you know the the revenue potential that we would be looking at in 3 years time for the ice cream unit that itself for a large vendor would constitute like 50 60% of their business if i'm not mistaken uh, would that be the right assumption No, Ajay. What you're looking at when you look at revenues for us is manufacturing cost. When you look at it from a customer's perspective, it's their realizable value, right? And generally, in case of FMCG products, the difference is a factor of two, uh, which means uh, the manufacturing cost is practically half of the net sales realization of the brand owners. Uh, in case of certain products like Aerocare, etc., uh, it could. In case of color cosmetics, etc., it could be higher. Uh, you could get to a manufacturing to NSR of of three. 
uh, and uh, so I don't think you can you can draw a parallel from our turnover to the customer's turnover directly. Um, question that I was trying to come across from the fact that you know we don't have many players in the country who would be having a thousand as in there would be few obviously who would be having a you know, turnover of thousand plus kind of in ice cream segment. But if I were to look at it from the perspective of you know uh, the the customers, you know for them to outsource just to you, or maybe in or the or maybe you know you being one of the other two kind of outsourcer in the ice cream segment is what I was trying to wonder. Would we be getting like a okay. almost like a half of their share in terms of the revenue or large? No, okay. So so maybe I misunderstood. So first, the first thing that I need to tell you is that no, our turnover will not constitute half of our principal turnover. And and I think instead of looking at turnover, maybe you should look at it in terms of volume. So if you're looking at around 15,000 tons of volume of ice cream being made at the facility, a large brand, even a regional brand for that matter, and, and we are in touch with some regional brands as well, uh, regional brands sell around 15 to 20,000 tons within a couple of states, right? Uh, so if you look at it from that perspective, I think that will give you a better idea that the national brands are much larger. Uh, the regional brands uh, have that kind of scale already. Uh, the second thing that you have to note is this particular facility is probably going to be uh, amongst the largest ice cream facilities in the country. Uh, however, it's not necessary that all future ice cream facilities, if we decide to do any, uh, will be of the same size. They could be smaller, they could be uh, manufacturing only cones or only sticks or only cups. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of uh, uh, variables there in terms of what we could do in the ice cream uh, sector. Ask your question. Yeah, yeah, you did it right. You had addressed it. So okay, that's quite thanks. helpful. Thanks, thanks. Uh, maybe I will look at it more from the volume perspective. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Reminder to the participants to ask a question. You may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Dipti Kothari from Kothari Securities. Please go ahead. Yes. Good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. So my first question was that you mentioned that the next leg of growth would be via inorganic or organic acquisitions. So can you throw some more light on the same? Uh, if, if you track our company, uh, we've, we've been very aggressive in terms of M&A. Uh, we've, we've always been looking for opportunities. We've, we've talked to uh, our customers who are looking at divestment. We've also looked at consolidation of the contract manufacturing industry by acquiring some of our competitors, etc. We will continue to do that. Uh, I am unable to give you any specifics or give you any more color around it. All I can say is that uh, we continue to look for assets which will help consolidate the contract manufacturing industry. And we also continue to look at assets where a customer is either not interested in running the factory or incapable of running a factory uh, or in, uh, has lower capacity utilization in a factory and they're looking at direct uh, assets in our favor. So we continue to look at that uh, very aggressively. I'm okay. sorry, but I can't, I, I, I can't give you any more color around that. Okay, sir. And sir, what are the new segments that we are looking at venturing into? You mean apart from home care, personal care, pesticides, infant foods, ice, leather shoes, beverages? Apart from that, uh, we're looking currently at health and wellness uh, uh, as a sector. This is and uh, uh, within the FMCG space, uh, we're also looking at pet foods. Uh, uh, within the A space, we are quite agnostic in terms of what product categories that we can uh, uh, manufacture. Okay, sir. And sir, which of your product category has the largest outsourced manufacturing opportunity? Can we please share that out of this total 1 lakh crore opportunity? What is the potential size for OTC healthcare market? It is uh, difficult to uh, slice that in terms of product categories. And frankly, if you look at that 1 lakh crore uh, uh, figure that we mentioned, that's probably only the FMCG uh, uh, industry. And, and, and you know that it's a back of the envelope calculation, right? Uh, what we've done there is we've taken the total FMCG size uh, of the uh, market. 
and then split up the manufacturing cost. The health and actually is a uh, sector which is probably as large as the FMCG sector. Uh, and in that case, we are going to concentrate only on the products and products which have an agency towards, uh, or rather are next to the FMCG uh, segment. Very difficult for me to look at, or that's very difficult for me to tell you, product category has the largest potential. All of them have uh, equally, I mean, just a, uh, a few days ago, we were in discussion with some government officials uh, for, uh, who are thinking of uh, doing a PLI for the, uh, or some kind of an incentive for the leather sector uh, and the shoe industry. And I think that could become a very, very large business for us as well. So it's very difficult for us to do that. Okay, okay. Thank you for that answer to my question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Akhil Parekh from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. The opportunity. Uh, Samir, my first question is on the inflationary trend, right? Uh, uh, so uh, how does the volumes of our end consumer uh, impact our, uh, our business? Because in last call, you had mentioned that the inflation shouldn't ideally impact us negatively. Uh, so that's first question. Uh, if the inflation sustains and if the end of volume, end consumer volumes uh, continue to be on a lower end, will that impact our sales? And second, uh, in an inflationary trend, uh, does our margin profile improve given that we operate on a fixed EBITDA, per mar EBITDA margin uh, in the dedicated manufacturing units? Okay, okay, so two, two questions. One is what happens in an inflationary environment to FMCG market in general. So two things, there are certain staples which, uh, in spite of the inflation, the demand is quite defensive. What ends up happening is that the customer then downgrades. So if, if they were using a more expensive, let's say, shampoo, uh, they were using a, a, a cheaper shampoo or they'll start buying a, a sachet instead of a bottle. Uh, given the fact that we've diversified across brands, uh, across product categories, we believe that any customer downgrading will not end up affecting us. The second uh, effect of inflation is reduced consumption. Uh, and, and that's some of the things that, that most of our customers have been talking about in their investor calls, where they are seeing that customers are reducing uh, their per capita consumption. That is something that definitely affects us, uh, but it affects us more in terms of the future growth rather than the current facilities. As far as the current facilities are concerned, especially in case of the dedicated manufacturing, as you are aware, we have long-term contracts which have a minimum guarantee. So we have very clear visibility of what the turnover will be for those facilities. However, any kind of, of reduction in the FNCG consumption definitely affects expansion plans of our principles and in turn it affects uh, growth plans for us. Hopefully, uh, India being uh, such a huge population and the demographics, uh, we don't see that this temporary blip of reduction in the volume will last more than a quarter or so. And fundamentally, I think the consumption story of, of the country uh, will continue. Uh, and as a result, we really don't think that's a major issue. Now, coming to the margin profile, I'm going to ask Mayank uh, to talk about uh, the effect of inflation on our margin. <laughs> Hi, Akhil. Hi. So, uh, Akhil, uh, as, you, as per our contract and our as per, we are passing through the uh, all the RMPM costs to our customers. So any increase or decrease in the RMPM cost will directly pass on to the customer. So no, our the question answer of it is that in in the inflationary trends, our margin profile does not increase because of the increase in the margin uh, because of the increase in the prices of the commodities because it is directly passed through to the customer on 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 a, on a monthly basis. You know? But but on an absolute basis, does our beta increases in inflationary trend on a like to like basis? For example, if I am selling a uh, if I'm manufacturing a soap of 100 rupees yesterday and today I am selling the same soap for 110 rupees, uh, on an absolute EBITDA level, will our uh, EBITDA improve? In oh, so, so the COGS, COGS will also increase by 10 rupees in that case, uh, Akhil. So our EBITDA remains in the figure, in the in the uh, rupees, it, it will remain same. Percentage while it will go here and there in the industry trend. Okay. Oh, fair enough. 
and second so, question so yeah also changed by the by that that much effect what so what do you imply samir again yeah so okay, mathematically when you look at a fixed ebitda that we get right which is guaranteed in case of our dedicated factories Correct. if the sales volume goes up our margin profile defined as a percentage of sales will actually go down right because our sales will increase correspondingly our cost will increase but our ebitda in absolute terms will remain the same and as a result the percentage will go down i think one of the main things that we tried to highlight earlier in terms of our dedicated manufacturing model is that our bottom line uh, which starts from ebitda and then our, our downwards to roe uh, or uh, the uh, pbt and pat are pretty much guaranteed irrespective of uh, what happens to the top line Okay. So when you say guaranteed, it means EBITDA per piece is guaranteed. That is what you are trying to imply, right? No, uh, EBITDA per factory is guaranteed. Okay. 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 Right. Probably, you, yeah. You got your answer, Akhil, or should I? Uh, no, I got it, but probably I'll, I'll just uh, go deeper into it, and if I have questions, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll connect you back if you want this question. Sure. Sure. So, And second question on the receivables front, right? Uh, so one of the uh, our largest clients, if I look at it, uh, their receivables are uh, broadly at 10 to 15 days, but our payable days are at 60 to 90 days. So there is a dichotomy in between these two numbers. So if you can please help me understand this. Yeah, I think this was a question which I think someone had asked in our previous call as well. Uh, and and I, I uh, so let me just address it in in a very simple way that when you look at the larger customer or when you look at our customers, uh, all of them have their own factories and they also have a contract manufacturing facility. If you look at our, uh, that would be very similar in terms of what our customers have in terms of payables because the raw materials and the packing materials suppliers who supply to us also supply to the uh, customers. As far as the outsourcing uh, receivables are concerned, uh, the payment terms are far more uh, favorable, uh, and that's for historic reasons in terms of how the outsourcing and the contract manufacturing industry in FMCG has evolved. Uh, I'm happy to take that question offline uh, because uh, it, it entails a, uh, some amount of history lessons about how excise uh, regime was and and how uh, tax had to be paid on FMCG products, etc. But to make a long story short, uh, our payables, our payables will be the same profile as that of, of uh, our customers. However, our receivables will be far better than the payables of our customers. Okay. Okay. Got it. I'm sorry if I've confused you on this as well. <laughs> no worries. If if I need help, I'll I'll, I'll connect you. Uh, please, because I I have, I have addressed this question earlier, and I'm happy to do that offline with you if if you want. Sure, sure. Thanks a lot, Samir and team, uh, and congratulations and uh, best wishes for coming forward. Thank you so much. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants to ask a question. You may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Nikhil from PIA. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Samir and team. Uh, congrats on a good set of numbers again. Um, so my first question is the difference between the standalone and consolidated top line is close to 35 crores. So is majority of that contributed by the new uh, Aero Products facility, or does ice cream also contribute significantly to it? So Nikhil, out of the, we have we have a difference of 33, 34 crores between uh, console and uh, standalone. Out of this, 24 has been contributed by the, the AeroCare unit, and 10 crores is by the ice cream unit. Okay, okay. So the ice cream unit has barely contributed. Hopefully, we'll see that start contributing. In the yeah, second so ice cream unit it started in uh, started in May uh, in this quarter, and it is a it was in ramping up stage, and ice cream is a, is a, a difficult category here also. Okay, so is all the, I mean, are you through the testing and validation phase and can we expect smoother quarters going ahead? Yes, absolutely. Uh, but uh, having said that, you're also coming into a monsoon lean season in the next couple of, uh, next three to four months. 
Uh, as a result, uh, we will not see any significant turnover coming in from the ice cream factory for the next uh, three or four months. But uh, post that, I think we should be able to ramp it up completely to 15,000 tons, as we mentioned in. Okay, so uh, does this also work like the seasonality in beverages where Q4 and Q1 is, I mean, where the revenue is front loaded and we see lower revenues in Q2 and Q3? Absolutely. Okay. I mean, uh, some no. summer products, we feel, uh, so uh, consumption during the summer goes up substantially. Uh, in case of the ice cream factory, we are also located in the north, uh, where the effect of winters and summers is far more. Uh, uh, significant than, let's say, the south facility in Mysuru, uh, where the difference between the summer temperatures and the winter temperatures is not that much. Noted. So, I mean, the, uh, I mean, in terms of concentration of seasonality, it will be higher in terms of summers for the ice cream facility. Right? Absolutely. Okay. Now, uh, so given the slowdown in FMCG volumes for the last uh, whole year. <laughs> How does the deal pipeline look? I mean, what's the status on you know being awarded new large projects? So the deal pipeline has definitely slowed down, but for us, uh, the the deal pipeline is nearly one and a half to two years, right? Because for a new factory, uh, that's the kind of gestation period. I mean, one casualty of the slowdown has been the Hyderabad bar facility, uh, which I think we've been talking in our investor calls and our presentations for nearly uh, three quarters now. Uh, we've finally started work on it in this quarter, uh, and we expect uh, to start production by Q4. Uh, so obviously, what happens is when, and and that was the the uh, the point that I was trying to make that when customers start reducing their consumption, the overall future growth and the deal pipeline becomes a little bit slower. Uh, we've been fortunate so far that that we have enough or we had enough stuff in the deal pipeline, uh, which will take us to uh, the kind of numbers that we've guided. Uh, but there's definitely some amount of slowdown. This is also, incidentally, an interesting time for consolidation uh, because when uh, there's, there's stress in the market overall, uh, we also get more opportunities uh, to consolidate the industry in terms of buying out competition or uh, doing some kind of a, a module or a takeover there. I hope you are raising funds for the same. Uh, I mean, I, of course, as uh, we being interested in the company, we will want you to acquire something at lower valuations. Um, all the best for that. Uh, last two questions from me is the bar and soap project. You just mentioned that. I just had a question that on in the PPT, it mentioned somewhere that the phase one of the expansion is being implemented now. So does this come in phases, the 150 crores, or the phase one is worth 150 crores? Uh, the 150 crores will be phased out, and that's that's one of the casualties of the slowdown. Uh, while the initial contract was to set up all the lines put together, uh, because of the slowdown, we've had to phase it up. Our first phase investment will be close to 60 crores, uh, and then uh, hopefully uh, the market will start looking up, and then we'll come back to you uh, uh, in terms of the second phase. Okay, and the second phase will also take another six months whenever you plan to do it, or does that happen in a shorter time frame? It will happen in a shorter time because what we are going ahead and doing is we are building the civil infrastructure uh, for the entire uh, 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 the entire uh, capacity. Noted. Uh, and one last question is whenever you mention the quantum of capex, now I know that your working capital is negative or close to zero in the business. So all the capex pertains only to the fixed assets, including the building and civil and the plant and machinery. I'm just asking for Absolutely. confirmation. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, no problem. Uh, thank you. That answers all my questions. All the best for the coming quarters. Thank you so much. Thank you. Reminder to all the participants to ask a question. You may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Priyanka Singh from Adidas Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, Dean. Good afternoon. Uh, I had two questions. Uh, uh, first one is, can you uh, throw some color on the current uh, industry scenario? And how is the demand like? 
Priyanka, I think you you you've heard from from people far uh, uh, smarter than me and far more uh, experienced than me. If you listen to conference calls by uh, uh, Britannia, HUL, Dapper, etc., uh, I think I would end up just repeating the same that there's definitely some amount of stress uh, in the immediate short term as far as demand is concerned. However, I think everybody remains bullish about the medium term uh, uh, performance of the industry. Okay. And uh, is there any demand supply gap? Like, ha has there been any significant impact on of FMCG slowdown on our business? Uh, considering that we just posted a record turnover in the last quarter and we are continuing to maintain our guidance, we believe that uh, we, sh we should not be affected by this slowdown. Uh, like I was mentioning earlier, uh, this kind of slowdown will definitely affect our deal pipeline. However, uh, we're also looking, our deal pipeline consists of greenfield projects as well as acquisitions. Uh, and as a result, uh, we continue to remain confident even about our deal pipeline in spite of the slowdown. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, Priyanka. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nishita Shah from Aurora Securities. Please go ahead. Oh, good afternoon, sir. Thank you for taking my question. So I just have two questions. So firstly, I wanted to ask, uh, are we seeing any uh, ramp, uh, ramp up in demand uh, in the next couple of quarters? Nishita, I certainly hope so. Uh, the fact that the bar project has been finally green-lighted means that uh, our customers are beginning to now look at some green shoots uh, in terms of demand coming back. Uh, and from our perspective, for the existing factories, uh, I, it, it's very difficult for us to, to make uh, an estimate of how demand will be in the next quarter, especially in case of the dedicated factories where we have guaranteed volumes, etc. But overall, I think uh, you should definitely see an FMCG demand coming back uh, within uh, by the by the Diwali quarter. Okay, sir. And so, secondly, just wanted to understand: is there any uh, de-stocking that we are seeing at our customers' end? Nishita, I'm not sure, right? I mean, uh, I don't think I would be privy to be able to answer a question about what kind of de-stocking is happening at the uh, at the customers' end. Uh, I can say that that uh, again, I'm I'm repeating that since we've had a record turnover, it definitely means that we've been able to ship out the maximum amount of product that we could. Uh, whether this product is going and sitting in the customers' warehouse or whether it's actually going to the end customer. Uh, I really uh, don't have an answer for you. Uh, I think, like I was telling uh, the earlier caller as well, that uh, uh, people who, who listen to quantum calls of Unilever, Dabur, etc., will, will testify that uh, all of them have hinted that there is some amount of slowdown. All of them have also hinted that uh, they think that things should start turning around as soon as uh, the, by, by next quarter or so. Okay, sir. This, this was helpful. Thank you, Nishita. The next question is from the line of Sachin Shah from SS Securities. Please go ahead. Sachin Shah, you may please go ahead with your question. Your line is unmuted. As there's no response from the current participant, we move to the next question from the line of Vijay Johan from Drive to Ryzen. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. So most of my questions have been answered already. I just had one query, like we mentioned that um, the bar, soap and bar plant will be in the phase when are going ahead. So are we expecting some kind of uh, like revenue ramp up from Q2 or it will be like coming from the Q4 itself? Uh we, uh, we we expect commercial production to start in Q4 uh, in terms of, uh, of phase one. Uh, in terms of ramp up, I would say Q1 of next financial year is when the phase one will ramp up completely. Between now and Q1 of next financial year, I'm hoping that we just sign off on the phase two as well. Uh, and if that happens, we'll come back to you and, 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 and give you appropriate disclosures about what we are looking at uh, uh, in terms of revenue ramp-up uh, from phase two. Right, right. 
and uh, uh, so if the ramp up is going to happen in uh, let's say the Q1 of the uh, completely for the phase one in the next financial year. So and uh, now we have lean quarters for the ice cream plant and also the beverage side. So uh, uh, like what kind of like revenue target we are looking for by at least for the FY23 we are looking at because uh, the ice cream and beverage plant will be also at a, a lean uh, uh, like growth side. So I, I I can't give you like a, a, a definitive target. I uh, what we've guided is that we'll be able to get to a 4,000 crore turnover by FY25. I think we are we are very confident about that guidance, and we we believe that we'll be able to reach there for sure. If you look at this Q1's performance, we are at around 600 crores, uh, which gives you an effective annual run rate of around 2,400 crores. Uh, given the other things that are in the play. Uh, your guess is as good as ours about where we will land up uh, between uh, uh, 2,400 and a higher number, whatever that is. Right, right. Yeah. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of E.L. Zaveri, retail shareholder. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, about your guidance of 4,000 crores, you think you'll get there without uh, diluting any more equity? And the other question is, in FY21, your top one customer was about 85% of your sales. Uh, what was it in FY22? Thanks. So, I'm not sure, Yash, uh, where have you got the number of 85% of sales uh, for the top yeah, one customer? About uh, 1171 crores out of uh, 1400. It's from your annual report. Okay, I'm going to have to check on this uh, because uh, I'm not sure about that. The top yeah, three customers uh, for us. Okay. Hello? Yeah, yeah, please go on. Yeah, yeah. So the top three customers for us definitely contribute around 85% of our turnover. Uh, the largest being uh, Unilever and Rapid Ben Kiga. Uh, we generally avoid giving specific numbers uh, as far as our customer breakup is concerned. Uh, like you are mentioning, if it's in the annual report, it's, it's definitely a screw up from our side, and I need to check on this. Uh, but in terms of uh, the uh, customer wise breakup, we generally avoid giving that. In terms of customer concentration, uh, I'm happy to give you a, a, a broad number, which is uh, that I think uh, nearly 80 to 85 percent of the business will come from the top three customers. And now, when you hit 4,000 crores, it will continue this way. Yes. Or? Okay. Yeah. So, so that's a difficult question for me, uh, Yash, about uh, 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 the revenue guidance. And uh, here's here's what 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 we have mentioned, right? Uh, to achieve 4,000 crores, given what we have already announced, we will not require any dilution uh, of equity capital at all. However, in case we have any opportunities uh, in terms of acquisitions or new projects, other than the ones which have been announced, we will probably then look at raising funds, in which case uh, our revenue guidance will also probably change. Okay. Uh, okay, just one more question. Uh, for your business, uh, currently you are pretty healthy on your debt metrics. So what do you think the optimum amount of debt is for a business and balance sheet like yours? Yes, uh, we are we are very comfort at very comfortable uh, position as far as the uh, company level debt is concerned. Uh, we are very comfortable. We can we can go ahead because our debt is indirectly guaranteed by our customer also. So we are okay to take more, but we are consciously uh, uh, trying to have this type of uh, debt equity ratio in mind, you know. So about five times interest cover and about one to one and a half times debt to equity. Is what right, so we are at 1.16 as console basis. We can move at uh, up to 1.4, 1.5. We are okay till that time. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's all from me. Thanks. Thank you, Yash. The next question is from the line of Shanti Patel from Shanti Patel Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Good afternoon. Uh, I joined your uh, call a little later. 
uh, as far as I understand, our turnover by 2025 will double of what we have got today. And uh, uh, EBITDA will remain same. Am I right? Uh, Mr. Patel, I'm not sure uh, I understand the question. EBITDA will remain the same, meaning uh, you're saying the broad percentage? That is right. Hello? Yes, yes. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. So we believe, so as far as the dedicated manufacturing is concerned, we believe that it will definitely remain around the same level. And the turnover uh, will be five uh, of the turnover we have got today. Mr. Patel, excuse me, this is the operator. We are unable to hear you clearly. Can you please uh, check your line? Sure. Uh, one minute. We request you to rejoin uh -huh. while we uh, take the next question, sir. Uh, we have the next question from the line of Faisal Hawa from HG Hawa and Company. Please go ahead. Notable hires that we have made in the last four to five months in uh, in M and A or in in the new verticals or even in the old verticals, because of the kind of growth that we are always going to target, uh, we will you know have new skin, new skin and shed the old skin. I'm sorry, Faisal, I'm, I'm not sure I got the question. Are there any notable new hires that we have made uh, in the last five to six months, new, new uh, uh, at the top? Yeah, uh, yeah, of course, Faisal. Across, across the board, we continue to hire new people uh, uh, at, at various levels. Uh, and uh, like we have mentioned, uh, the, uh, uh, from, a, from a corporate perspective, at a senior level, uh, Sanjay has been appointed as a director at uh, RB Shaw. Uh, and he has gone ahead and recruited his team. We've also got the entire team of uh, uh, R.B. Shaw who has joined us, uh, including the senior people of uh, Rekhid Ben Kizar Shaw. Uh, they are now being integrated into the organization and they will be given additional responsibilities across us. Uh, so in terms of people, uh, that, that's a continuous, uh, 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 it's a continuous process for us in terms of recruitment. Thinking of you know changing the hierarchy or changing the corporate structure ever you know uh, with, with the kind of uh, load you know because what may have worked so far may not work with with much larger volumes or or you don't feel the need to do that. In terms of the org structure or in terms of the corporate structure. Hierarchy, you know the reporting structures and all. You know, do, uh, do you feel that any kind of changes would be needed with with much larger uh, revenues? Because, you know, our stock is at 100 times multiple always, you know, and uh, the market is always betting that you are, uh, you know, going to double the revenue every two and a half, three years. So that's like a, you know, a very, uh, uh, it's, it's a horse that you're riding, which, uh, you know, which, which will need a lot of changes, uh, uh, you know, an agility at, at, the, at, at your end, at the top leader. So, Feather, first of all, I should be thankful that you didn't say that we are riding a tiger. It gives me it gives me bad memories of the letter that uh, the Satyam guy wrote. But on a on a serious note, uh, you are absolutely right. We are we are looking at changes in terms of our org structure as well. Uh, the addition of as as the head of the health and wellness division is a new experiment for us, uh, where a gentleman is being given an entire sector and is being given PNL responsibility for it. For uh, we are also actively looking at uh, recruiting a chief operating office, and I'll come back to you once that that uh, 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 that position is filled. There will be uh, uh, changes in terms of how we work. Uh, uh, Ganesh uh, uh, will will be happy to talk about uh, his team and and what he's doing in terms of implementing ERP across the factories. We are actually upgrading our ERP system uh, and doing a lot of work on processes, etc. Uh, but Pedro, this is this is something that we have to do as 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 as, as a basic uh, price of admission, right? This is exactly what I wanted to hear. You know, you know, uh, people giving uh, being given P N L responsibility, having a uh, C C double O, you know, running uh, the operations on a more mi micro level, and you know, you being more free. So, uh, 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 I mean, my 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 kudos to you. And I mean, you have done exactly what you know. I I thought you should be doing, and not that I my my thoughts really matter, but uh, 
but uh, I, I mean, uh, this, is, this is what I actually wanted to hear. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shanti Patel from Shanti Patel Investment Advisors. Please. Madam, are you getting my voice? Yes, we can hear you now. Yes. Yeah. My my question was by 2025, what will double? I'm sorry, we uh, to pretend we are unable to hear you. Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, there seems to be a disconnection from the management line. We request you to please stay connected while we reconnect the management. See, you reconnected to the call, and uh, Mr. Patel has moved out of the queue. Uh, we are unable to hear him. So I hand over the call to the management uh, for closing comments, please. Thank you so much. Uh, we are related as uh, HFL yet again has delivered the best ever quarterly results. And we were able to keep our promise of unprecedented performance on our journey of rupees 4,000 crore revenue. With Caesar's support from our customers, a solid all-round working team, committed management, and with our decentralized manufacturing strategy, we have been able to embrace every possibility that came our way, making the most of it. With undeterred determination, we continue to focus on seizing every possible prospect to become the go-to manufacturer, contract manufacturer for FMCG business. We are highly convinced that contract manufacturing as a subcategory of the FMCG universe remains very relevant and is only becoming more relevant with time. This is expected to have a simultaneous impact on the sector. We believe the next couple of years are going to be exciting in terms of growth for the contract manufacturing industry. We are enthusiastic about the future and are working hard on a pipeline that shall only consider moving ahead in one direction, onward and upward. Thank you again for joining on the call today. I hope we have been able to address all your queries. For any further information, kindly get in touch with us or strategic growth advisors, our investor relations advisors. Here's wishing everyone an affectionate and a warm Raksha Bandhan. Stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you so much. Thank you, members of the management, ladies and gentlemen. On, ladies and gentlemen, with this we conclude today's conference call. Thank you for joining us. And you may now disconnect your lines.